transparency today. I love that. I just love it. I we just transparency, authenticity. Um, you know, that's it's so healing, not just for the person telling the story, but for the people hearing the story. And we need more of that. So thank you. You're welcome. Absolutely. And one of the things that I was told very early on in my recovery is is, is our secrets keep us sick. And, yes, amen. And so I'm I'm not willing to have those because I'm not yeah. willing to go back to to the the life that I used to live. Absolutely. Tell us what you you told me yesterday. What your your sponsor told you two things to always do. Tell us about that. Yeah, you know, um, after I got sober, and um, this was actually shortly shortly after that incident in in my house in my apartment. You know, within a within six months or so, uh, I had, I found my first real sponsor and, and he had said to me, there's, I know you won't do everything perfectly, but there's two things I want you to do to the best of your ability. And, and the first one is, is never turn down a request for service. Mm -hmm. And the second is you, n you never, or always remember to answer your phone because yes. you never know um, whose life you might save. It might be your own, it might be someone else's. And, and that actually plays a huge part in my story. I was going to say, so, tell, so that plays right into the story where we left off at break. You were holding a gun in your mouth mm -hmm. and you had prayed to God to help you commit suicide. So yeah. what happened then? You know, I, I, I had asked God to help me take my life. And, um, and I firmly believe to this day that that's exactly what he did as he took that life from me oh, yeah. and began me on the path of a new life. Oh, yeah, well, and that's great, yeah. And uh, you know, I I passed out shortly afterwards, and I remember waking up the next day, and and um, there's um, there's a quote that I, I love, and it and it and it talks about the pitiful, incomprehensible demoralization that we feel uh, as as people who, suffering from substance abuse, and and I woke up the next morning, and I really truly knew what that meant, um, just to be so demoralized and and in such a pitiful state because I knew that I was done. I knew that I didn't want to to live the way that I was living any longer, mm -hmm. but yet I, I, I couldn't stop. There yeah. was nothing in my power that could stop mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And and really it was only God that, that could. And so I, w I remember waking up the next morning and, and pinching my nose closed and crying as I just drank down a warm tumbler of vodka mm -hmm. um, just to kind of get myself back into, you know, some sense of normalcy. And the next day, uh, which was July 21st, 2008, um, after working in the morning and being as sick as I've ever been, um, I, you know, I had, I took my last drink the night before I went to work the next morning. Uh, I trained clients in the morning, was sick all morning, gathered the other trainers in, in an office and just said, I can't do this anymore. And I, I need help and I need you to cover for me. And I drove home. I threw some dirty clothes in a bag and I drove three and a half hours out to, uh, Calistoga and began my journey of recovery at Duffy's in Calistoga, Calistoga 12 step best base 12 step, program. Okay. Mm -hmm. My dad had gone to meetings there in the seventies and early eighties. By this time your dad's clean now and he'd been encouraging you to oh, yeah. get clean. Yeah. He'd okay. been, he'd been just encouraging me to go to meetings and, and trying to help me in whatever way yeah. he could. Yeah. Um, and I can't imagine the suffering he must have d dealt with in, in watching me unravel. Yeah. And feeling responsible for that, yeah, you know, exactly as a parent, you yeah. know, and that's, I'm sure you were probably part of his inventory that he had to do. I, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, you know, I just got involved. I got involved in the program of recovery. I got involved um, in service as soon as I got there. Uh, you know, my dad said to me, look for the similarities, listen for the similarities and not for the differences. Find the commonality, commonalities in your stories and, and cling to that because you all have things that, that, that separate you, but you more than anything else, you have things that keep you together. Exactly, and and that's what I really looked for. Mm. And uh, we had a, a gentleman that uh, led our big book study, which is the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, and and he did a weekend study. And I just kind of clung to him when he was there, and I asked him, you know, what about this, and what did you read here, and how often did you read this, and you know, I I probably drove him crazy, but we're still Facebook friends, mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. and, and keep in contact and, and it's pretty amazing. But I just got involved and when I got out, it's funny, I, I, talk about God working in your life. I got out and I drove home and I was sitting on my porch and I had decided, um, you know what, I'm not gonna go to a meeting tonight. I just got out, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna watch TV, I'm gonna relax, you know, I kinda, I, I kinda deserve this. <laughs> and, and I sat on my porch and, and this big, beautiful butterfly came fluttering by. And, 
and I had never noticed a butterfly back there. And, and then all of a sudden there's a hummingbird at the, at the hummingbird feeder. And, and then there's another one. And, and I really, you know, it, it was really clear to me, you know what, I need to go mm. to the meeting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it was really, it was just God speaking into my life. Mm. And I went that night and it's funny because I went that night and I had one of my former clients and a couple of other people that I knew from town that were at that meeting. Wow. And they said, oh my gosh, you know, I had no idea. And it's so good to see you and yeah. welcome. And yeah. Good. And I just felt so welcomed at, at the 12-step meetings. And I think that was a big part for me because I felt a part of and not a part from. And uh, shortly after that, I moved up to Oregon, uh, lived with my dad and his stepmom. Um, that didn't really work out as well as I had wanted. Um, there were some issues with family going on. And, and um, so at about six months sober, I moved out and I was living in my car. Mm. I really that's didn't hard. Have, yeah. That's hard at six months sober to be living in your car. Yeah. yeah it's, it's still it, young in that. Yeah, you know? it's pretty difficult. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's especially more difficult when you're working on a four-step, you're working on an inventory, you're, you're trying to wade through the wreckage of your past, yeah. and, and that's weighing heavy mm -hmm. every single night on, on my heart and on my soul. And, and I'm sitting there in, you know, in a dark, cold car with a flashlight. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, uh, I had lived like that for for a few months, and had decided at that point that that I didn't I didn't want to live like that anymore. And you know, it's that fear. So you um, got back into kind of into the depression, but you weren't drinking absolutely. yet. You were still no, sober. No, I wasn't drinking. But I was you still were, sober. yeah, because the the alcohol we you know people consume the alcohol to cover the pain to mask mm -hmm. it, and so then you take the alcohol away. Now you're feeling more. Yeah. You know. So I could see where that would happen. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I sat in my car and I sat in my car for a five day stretch. And every single day I prayed at night before I went to sleep that God would, would take me. While you I still slept. didn't know the Lord yet. You still hadn't no. accepted Jesus as your savior. Okay. Uh, no. But you still knew that there was a higher power. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And okay. I knew through, <clears throat> I knew through the 12 step program that I needed to have God in my life yeah. in order to, to find <clears throat> sobriety mm -hmm. and, um, in order to keep sobriety really, yeah. um, and, and so I had been exploring my faith and I had been reading a lot of different books um, on spirituality and uh, a friend of mine had just given me uh, a book not, not, too, not too long before that, uh, The Life Recovery Bible. Mm -hmm. and Great Bible. Really, absolutely. And it, it was the first time I could really see God's Word in, um, you know, in my program of recovery you know, in the, in the recovery book, you know, I could see the parallels and I, and I, you know, and I really knew that, that the 12 step program I was involved in was, was absolutely divinely inspired. Yes, absolutely. You know, the and, 12 and, steps are absolutely from the Bible. I mean, very clearly, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. And, and I knew that, um, I needed a God that was willing to forgive me for what I had done and who I had been. And, and I, and I, I didn't want to be defined by my past any longer. Yes. And really out of everything that I had searched, you know, there was only, there was only one God that was willing to, you know, to forgive me and, and one God that had died on, on the sin, you know, on the cross for, the, for our sins. And, yeah. and that was Jesus. And I looked at the ministry of Jesus and I was reading through the ministry of Jesus and, and looked at who, who he ministered to. And, and I really identified with that. I identified with being, yeah. you know, that sinner, that tax collector, you know, that adulterer. I mean, yeah. I just, yeah. I felt the leper. That. Sometimes you Absolutely. feel like the leper, you know? Yeah, exactly. I felt that, but that wasn't enough to keep away that depression that I was feeling from really taking an introspective look at my life. And, and I, I sat in that car and I prayed for five days that, that God would take my life while I slept. And, and at the end of that five days, I, I, I was really angry, you know, and I just, I told God, well, if you're not going to do it, I will. Mm -hmm. And um, and this is with the story of, of the, the thing that my sponsor had told me comes into play. And and I stepped on a bridge in Salem, Oregon, and and I was going to jump into that bur and jump into the water from from the bridge. And and I and I really had decided that that's what I was going to do. There wasn't really any fear there any longer. And uh, my phone rang. And you have to answer your phone. You made that and, commitment. And I made that commitment. I, absolutely, it was just a reflex for me to pick up my phone. And I answered my phone, and it was someone on the line that that needed my help mm -hmm. and and they wanted to drink and and they didn't know how they were going to get through the night and they really needed my help and and I was able to set thank you lord <laughs> absolutely totally god intervention there yeah mm -hmm. yeah and um you know it's it's nice to say too that I went over to his house that night and and uh and we chatted and 
and he was able to, you know, remain sober. He's sober to this day, and and uh, you know, it's something that that uh, that helped me. And and the next day, I got a call from someone who ran a sober living house, and they had a bed and heard that I was looking, and and I was able to get into a sober living home, and you know, and God used me there mm-hmm. in amazing ways. I was I was the only one in that house that wasn't on probation or parole. And, and didn't have a, a child in protective custody, you know, protective custody, yeah. and and he used me. I I was able to tutor some of those men as they went back to school. I was able to share my story. I was able to share a little bit of my life with them, and, and make an impact on, on their lives as well as them making an impact. Exactly, on mine. exactly. So was it in there in that sober living home that you found the Lord? I really started to reach out to God. I was reading the Bible on a daily basis. I was going to church. Um, I did take a look at a couple of Celebrate Recovery programs mm-hmm. and went out to a couple different places. Um, but I really felt at home, you know, in in the home that I had made in in a different twelve step program. Yeah. And and that's the Celebrate Recovery is a twelve step too. It yeah. just has it has biblical principles that accompany it. Yeah. You know, and 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 the um, eight recovery principles. Yeah. Yeah. So. And Did I say that right? You know what I mean. Yeah, the, the scripture. <laughs> the scripture that goes with it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. It's but I didn't really know anybody in that environment, mm-hmm. and I didn't have anybody to go to church with, really, and and so it was still I was still working towards, um, you know, finding that relationship. That okay. I'm gonna take a break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Stay tuned. <laughs> 